right guys, today we're gonna to be talking about how to understand place value. Okay, so each place value in the place value chart is 10 times larger than the place to the right of it. As you move to the left, the places get larger. This affects the number of zeros you will see in your answer. So if I'm here in the ones, as I move to the tens, it gets 10 times larger. As I move to the hundreds, I'm 10 times bigger than that. And as I move to the thousands, I'm 10 times larger than that. You can see this with the way the number of zeros come out as well. A one in the ones place is just a one, but the minute it moves to the tens place, it has a, another zero on it, and now it's 10. Um, as they move to the hundreds, it has two zeros on it, it's a hundred. As it moves to the thousands, it has three zeros on it, it's a thousand. And to show you that it's literally 10 times larger, so once if I multiply one times 10, I get 10, and there's that tens place. I multiply 10 times 10, I get 100 at the hundreds place. And if I multiply 100 times 10, I get 1,000. And I can see that here in this place value. So each one of them is literally being multiplied by 10. Every place value is 10 times larger than the one before it. Now, when we are on the other side of the decimal, the numbers are still becoming 10 times larger as they move to the left, just like we were just looking at on the last slide. Um, but rather than gaining a zero, they start losing a zero. And the reason why they're losing those zeros in front of them, well, eventually you're gonna see they're gonna become a whole number or a number that you would normally count with. So like a one in the thousandths place is gonna be written 0 .001. As it moves to the hundreds place, it's 0 .01 as it moves to the tenths place, 0.1. And then when I move to the ones place, it would just be written simply one. So that's the only thing that's gonna be a little bit different is when I'm over here in the decimals, rather than putting an additional zero on, it's almost like I'm losing a zero because that number's becoming larger and larger and moving towards the whole numbers or the counting numbers. Now, each place in the place value chart is 10 times smaller or one tenth the size of the place value to the left of it. So what we mean here is that as we move, as we move this direction, everything's becoming 10 times smaller than the unit before it. So for example, one in the hundreds place is gonna be 100. As I move here, it turns to 10, which is a smaller number. And as they move to the ones, it's just a one, which is a smaller number. And it's literally becoming 10 times smaller. And I wanna show you that. So if I have 100 and I divide that by 10, I get an answer of 10, which you can see here, hundreds to tens. If I have 10 and I divide that by 10, well, I get an answer of one. So I, you can see how I move along this place value chart. I'm now be dividing by 10 rather than multiplying 10 by 10. So I can say that it's getting 10 times smaller or one tenth of the size. But as far as actually solving for those, I would be dividing. Once we pass the decimal again, it's gonna look a little flip flop like in the last example, we're actually gonna be putting zeros on um, to the front of the number, which is showing that it's getting smaller and smaller one-tenth or ten times smaller than the number to its left. So for example, um, a one in the tenths place would be just written point one, and as I move to the hundreds place, it's gonna be point zero one, and you can see it's like I'm adding a zero on to the thousandths point zero zero one. So it feels like I'm adding zeros on, but what I'm doing is I'm continuing to move it farther and farther away from the decimal. Those zeros are there to hold the place so that we know that this is now in the thousands place. We wouldn't know that if we didn't have these two zeros and we wouldn't know this was in the hundreds place if we didn't have that zero there. So they go there to show us where that one is actually located at and to show that it's getting smaller and further away from one. Now, we can show how numbers get larger by 10 when we multiply by multiples of 10. So for example, here I have 60 times 10. Well, that's gonna be um, 60. And if I have 60 times 100, I can do six times the one right there in the front and put on those two zeros. I am at 600, six times 1,000, six times one is six, and then I put my three zeros to notate that I'm 6,000. 
we can um, show how numbers get smaller by 10 when dividing by multiples of 10 as well. And probably the easiest way, you can literally set this up as a 10 and, and, and do a long division problem, but it's simpler. I could say I have one zero here and one zero here. So I'm now at 600, one here, one here, I'm at 60, one here, one here, I'm at six. And that's just showing how the place value is moving backwards. All right, so these would be a typical type problems you might see um, in a fifth grade classroom about place value. So if I have six times three, it'll say if, if I know six times three is 18, then 600 times three would be what? What I'm supposed to do is you guys should be able to reason about the fact that if I know six times three is 18, that's not gonna change. All that's changed is I have these two zeros here showing that I'm in the hundreds place. So I'm gonna put those two zeros there still to show that I'm in the hundreds place. Here would be another example where I would have to figure out, well, how many times did I multiply this number to get to a number this large? Well, first off, with this decimal, this makes this one a little more complicated, but that two would have to hop over that decimal, and that would be 532. So that means I've gotten, I've moved place values one time. Then let's add those zeros on. I'm seeing one, two, three zeros, one, two, three. So that means I moved um, those, I moved that place value a few more times. So I'm actually gonna show you that a little bit slower so you can see what happens. So the two moves over that decimal. So now I have 532.0. There's always invisible zeros here. We don't always write them unless we need them. So then my next one, the zero would hop over and I'm at 532 or 5,320 point. So that was my second move. I'm going to move another zero over 53200. Zero, zero. Still not to where I need to be, but that was my third move. Um, I'm going to move another one over 53200. Zero, zero. There I've moved them all over as many as I've needed. That took me four moves to make that number. So that would be one with four zeros. So that would mean that I actually multiplied that number by 10,000. All right, so notating powers of 10. We can also notate multiples of 10 using scientific notation or powers of 10. And this gets a little bit shorter. So instead of writing out, um, a larger number we can make it a little bit smaller you can see here on this slide for example um, down here at the bottom with a thousand instead of writing those three zeros I can just put 10 to the third power that three is showing that I have three zeros after that one two two zeros one just plain one I have no zero so I'm gonna be to the to the zero power there and then and I've repeated that I'm sorry um, then after the decimal, negative one, negative two, negative three, and it just continues to count on that way. So it's a little bit shorter, especially when I get larger numbers like a million, which is something we might do in fifth grade. Instead of having to write out that, I could put 10 to the sixth power, and it's a little bit shorter, saves me some time. So let's solve these problems and let's use that scientific notation. So if I have 5.3, and I want to figure out what I multiplied 5.3 by to get to this number. So we could do it like our last problem, 5.3. How did I get to this? Well, first off, that 3 hopped over there. So that became 53. So that was one time that I moved across a place value to the next place value. Remember, there's always invisible zeros. So if I they're not there, I can add them in. So this 0 hops over, and now I have 1 0. So now I have moved twice. I'm still not to the number I need to, so I'm gonna take another zero and move them over, and now that gives me 5,300. That was my third time moving. And I'm still not where I need to, so I'm gonna move another one over. So it looks like I am now at 53,000. That's my fourth time doing this. And I'm still not where I need to, so I'm gonna hop over one more time, so I have 530,000. That was my fifth time doing that. So 
I could write that I took 5.3 and multiplied it by 10 to the fifth power. That would be a little bit shorter than writing all of that, 100,000. Another way I might end up using it would be similar to this other problem here. I have 6 million, I'm dividing it by 10 to the third power. Well, that means three zeros, right? 10 to the third power, one, two, three. And we could do this like we did our other problems. I have three here, I can take three here, and I'm left with an answer of 6,000. That kind of speeds things along. I hope this helps you a little bit with place value. Biggest takeaways you should know is which direction, you know, as I move to the left, my numbers are getting 10 times larger. As I move to the right, my numbers are becoming 10 times smaller.